You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. What's going on everyone? Ken in here hanging out uh, in the backyard, which is basically where I hang out all the time. My uh, niece is here, which is nice. She, I don't know if she wants to be on camera. There she is. Boom. That, that's Avi. That's my buddy. I love this kid. Her and her sister are here. Uh, so it's going to be a fun couple of days with those two lunatics. But uh, we got questions because it is Saturday and uh, it's the Ask Cam Kennan Day. Now this is a lengthy one. I'm going to go on a, ramble, a rant. Some of you like my rants because, uh, you know, I don't know, the last one I did was about hunting. This one, however, is about animals in zoos. And uh, this is from, let's see, Jared DeWitt. It's a long question, see, very long question. And he asks, I'd love to hear your opinion on the debate of whether or not we should be keeping animals captive in zoos. A lot of people have issues with the confined space wild animals are held in, but disregard the many positive aspects of zoos. And what would, uh, yeah, rid of the zoos. Can you express your opinion on the pros and cons of zoos and what changes you would like to see moving forward, specifically in habitat design? What are exhibits lacking? How do we revolutionize the zoo exhibit? Perhaps remind viewers how far we've come in exhibit design, originally viewing through metal, metal bands barriers to more immersive experience for the animal and visitor. As great as some exhibits are, I don't think we should ever feel satisfied with the current state of exhibit design. We can always continue to evolve and learn, designing more, better, realistic habits. Feel free to reach out if you care to discuss further. All right, well, thank you, Jared. I love this question. It's a long one, uh, but you know what? Let's, uh, let's do the question. I'll try and answer all the little nuances that you had in there, all the different questions, as we kind of wander through my backyard. Um, number one, you guys realize that I am so passionate about trying to keep animals in as natural a situation as possible. Now, going back to the early days of zoos, yes, they were pretty much, it was incarceration for animals. It was just uh, a situation where the animals were kept in concrete uh, environments or habitats. You couldn't even call it a habitat. It would be more like a cell. And that is definitely not something I like to see. There are also animals, um, you know, like gorillas. I had an interesting experience years ago. It was around 1997, I was doing shows for the Airwalk stunt team. I was in Denver, Colorado, and I was at the Denver Zoo, and I was just hanging out. I was alone, and I was just wandering. She's gonna wander with us, my little buddy, Avi. And uh, I was kind of hanging out, and I came across the gorilla enclosure, and it was a nice enclosure, you know? It was large, um, albeit not a mountain, as most mountain gorillas like. Um, but anyway, this animal was just sitting there, beautiful silverback male, and he was just kind of hanging out, and I was kind of having a moment with him. It was just us two. We we're looking at each other and you could really see the depth and the, the spirit in this animal's eyes, you know? And so basically we were hanging out, looking at each other and then a group of school children came over and started banging on the glass and this gorilla just went like this. He just turned right around and it was almost as though he was embarrassed. Yeah. And I thought, I, I, it did strike me because here's a majestic animal and like an animal that you view as the king of his domain, you know, a big, large gorilla. And I felt like maybe he was um, depressed. And it was really easy to get that feeling. Um, so that kind of struck me and that always stayed with me because obviously I don't have gorillas. I have tortoises and other reptiles, but I always strive to give these animals exactly what they need. And I do believe in enrichment. Um, it's very important that we give these animals enrichment so that they are able to go about the business of being uh, a tortoise or lizard or whatever species you're keeping so that these animals can behave uh, in a more, believe it or not, intelligent way because these animals are designed uh, and have evolved to kind of behave in certain ways and do certain things and provide a function for the environment. And if they are not kept in a situation that is conducive for that behavior, they no longer are doing what they should and they're not as intelligent. There's Darth Maul, that beautiful Darth Maul cherry head. We love Darth Maul because it looks like the Dark Lord of the Sith with that, that kind of crazy looking head and eyes. But going back to the question, do I, what do I think about zoos? I actually love zoos and modern zoos, such as the Bronx Zoo and the San Diego Zoo and Dallas Fort Worth Zoo, um, many, many zoos that are, you know, working 
uh, very diligently to create an incredible opportunity for people who normally wouldn't come into contact with these animals. Um, they're really doing a fantastic job for education and for conservation. Many zoos take some of the proceeds and donations and they apply those donations to providing uh, work conservation work, uh, which we call in situ, which means in the wild or in the place the animal's from. Uh, they are doing a lot of good work all over the globe for conservation. Uh, so that's very important. And if we take away the zoo's ability to have these ambassador animals, then we are actually gonna be doing a disservice for animals all over the globe. Um, you know, so we wanna make sure we support good zoos. Now, I've been to zoos that are considered zoos, but they're nothing more than roadside attractions. I've also been to roadside attractions that were better than some zoos. So it all comes down to the people behind the scenes that are doing the work. Uh, it's very important. As you guys know, you know, there are gonna be breeders and, you know, uh, reptile keepers that keep animals kind of like I do in large spacious enclosures. And then there are others that kind of view the animals as a means to an end, as a way to make money exclusively. And, you know, I believe when you do that, you're exploiting the animals. Now, I have no problem with selling animals at all. Uh, I think it's one of the ways here, the Redfoots, it's one of the ways in which we can cut down on the wild animal trade. You want to buy captive raised animals. So very important. Uh, and to do that, you need to locate really quality breeders who have the best interest for their animals in mind. Um, but there are some out there that basically just crowd the animals together. They're all about just getting the eggs or making babies. They're breeding these animals uh, into exhaustion in the case of some snakes and stuff like that. They're overbreeding them, not allowing the animals to recuperate because it takes a lot of energy. Ava. Uh, Avi. Oh, Avi, I'm sorry. I screwed up. Sorry, yeah. it's Avi. I hate when people call me Keenan. So. Keenan. Well, people do that time to time. Some people call me Camp. They don't realize my name's Kenan. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, where was I, Avi? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? She's not listening. Uh, that hurts. That hurts, kid. Anyway, so what's going on is um, we want to make sure that we identify people that are doing the right thing for the animals. And it's the same case with zoos. Now, I've been fortunate enough in my uh, long career of keeping animals that I've made friends with a lot of zoo professionals. And I've had them over here to Camp Kennan. Oh, look at this. These tortoises are happy snacking on some Missouri diet. I place it kind of up and around here so that I get these animals walking about and exploring for the food. And that's called enrichment. That's something that you should all be striving to do for your tortoises and lizards and snakes and crocodilians, whatever you guys are keeping. Uh, you want to create these situations where the animals are kind of foraging for food. Uh, this way they don't become obese. Uh, but there's Darwin back there. Look at her. What a pretty girl. So anyway, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, you know, uh, develop relationships with zoo professionals and I found out that zoos uh, work with private keepers um, that they trust. Uh, there are certain things that you have to do, uh, criteria that you have to meet in order to properly uh, work with zoos, but it's something that I want some of you out there to strive towards. Um, go volunteer at the zoos, go do things like that because it's very important for you to build these relationships, to let these people know that you're serious, that you're looking to do the right thing for animals. Um, if you have local wildlife foundations in your town or a wildlife sanctuary, get involved, get out there and start working with them because it's only gonna help you become a better keeper and it might even just show you what's available. You may find good people and you know what? You may find bad people, but you got to learn how to know the difference. And uh, basically, guys, it's something that I'm very passionate about, about getting people uh, involved in conservation at a local level. Because don't, you know, you can't do anything global until you start acting lo locally. Um, I do my part with these animals. I'm providing a, you know, basically a place where certain animals are retired to my home. We take good care of them. Uh, I absolutely love my animals, as you know. Um, but again, back to the question, zoos, very, very important. Um, now, I just picked off some ticks. Ew. Sitting in, well, what, here, hold those oh, for no, me. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Ah, she's a little New York kid. You've got ticks in Long Island. Come on. Oh, I don't see them. 
you don't see them? Yeah, well, they're sneaky little boogers. Um, anyway, um, what was I saying? Brain fade. Whoops, there it goes. Yep, my brain stopped. Oh, I remember. Anyway, what you want to do is you want to basically get involved with these zoos uh, so that you can kind of create a really cool relationship. And, you know, it's only going to help the both of you. Um, this is something, you know, I'm not special. I'm one of you. I'm just a little further along the journey. Um, the other thing or the other part of the question that I think we should talk about is what would I like to see in the future? Now, here's the deal. So many people will say things like, oh, those animals belong in the wild. It's wrong to keep animals in captivity. But the reality is, guys, the wild is becoming more and more scarce. And um, if you look at situations like some of the uh, animals in Africa, these animals are basically on these giant uh, national parks, reserves. But what is a national park nowadays other than a very large enclosure? Because if the animals wander outside of that area, they're no longer protected. And animals don't realize borders. Animals don't realize, um, you know, political barriers. So what happens is these animals are basically in a very large enclosure. And that's something that you have to take into consideration because there's really no wild left. It is getting more and more scarce as more and more human beings continue to expand and take up habitat. There's habitat loss, there's over collection for the food trade and pet trade. Uh, there's basically, guys, just too many people. Uh, too many people and we are putting too much pressure on wild populations of animals. So zoos are going to be important. Uh, zoos continue to play a very important role in the survival of many different species because they create arcs. They're like living arcs. And not only are zoos important, but very good keepers, people that have the best interest for these animals in mind are also going to be more and more important. And it's very important that us as private keepers or hobbyists are going to be doing the right thing by following all the laws that are in place for wild animals, for not buying animals you shouldn't have, for not releasing animals into the wild. Because every single time you read a story about an animal that's out of place, it hurts us as a whole. And more and more uh, laws and legislation come down and they just they take away more and more of our ability to do the right thing for these animals so that's my rant i like zoos in recap as long as uh we are doing the right thing by the animals enrichment large enclosures um you know really interesting habitat design as you mentioned there uh, jarrett uh it's very important here's the aquascape ecosystem rec pond um this is an amazing opportunity uh, that I have for some of these African cichlids. You can see them in there now. They're just swimming about, doing their thing. Plenty of rocks to hide in. It's about learning about the species you love and providing really cool habitats for them to kind of explore and do their thing. And of course, when animals start to breed, you know you're doing the right thing. So that's it. That's my rant. How'd I do? I think she did Pretty good. Pretty good? She's a tough critic. <laughs> that AV as you can tell. All right, everyone, thanks for listening to me ramped. I uh, hope you like this little impromptu walk around the crib. Uh, lots going on here, man. So don't forget to like and subscribe and head on over to uh, patreon.com. Uh, well, patreon.com slash campcannon where you can help support these videos and you guys can submit your questions where we'll answer them right here on the YouTube channel. Thank you, Jared, for your question. I hope I did it justice. Um, you know, a lot going on. I got to get these girls to the beach. Uh, I'm the uncle, and I got to keep you guys entertained, don't I? Yeah. Not easy. Not easy with preteen and teenage girls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's Ava. 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 I won't say Ava. Won't do it. All right. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye, everyone. What's this? What's this? Nah. This is for you. No, you're kidding me. No, I'm not. You're kidding me. What is it?